Hello, today, we're diving into the fascinating world of Chinese dragons, exploring an impressive collection of 27 unique creatures and their tales. This assortment of dragons is quite rare and diverse, unparalleled anywhere else globally. In Chinese culture, dragon legends have been around for several millennia, dating back to several thousand years before Christ. These mythical beings were so revered that in ancient China, only emperors had the privilege of using the dragon symbol, believing themselves to be descendants of dragon deities. We'll begin our journey with Long Wang, the most significant dragon in Chinese mythology. Long Wang. In the Celestial Empire, the dragon Long Wang holds a prestigious status, reigning supreme as the king of all dragons and embodying the element of water. Long Wang is revered not just as a ruler but also as a symbol of peace and prosperity, and it's said that he possesses a vast treasured trove of immeasurable wealth. Long Wang was an immense creature, measuring roughly 500 meters in length. He was uniquely characterized by a head crowned with either a crest or deer horns. His eyes bore the gentle appearance of a hare's, while his ears resembled those of a cow, and his neck took on the slender form of a snake. The dragon's spine was intricately adorned with 81 thorns, and his body was covered with scales that echoed the texture of a carp's. Long Wang had paws resembling those of a tiger, complete with claws sharp as a hawk's. His voice echoed with the deep resonance of a gong. Underneath his chin, scales jutted out slightly, extending backwards for about 12 inches, a feature sharp enough to be deadly. On Long Wang's forehead, there was a unique protrusion, similar to Mount Boshan, and right below his chin, a pearl sparkled, adding to his majestic presence. During the era of Yin, the dragon Long stood as a symbol of the entire earth, representing the harmonious union of heaven and water. Legend has it that Long resided in wells and lived close to the earth veins, which he diligently protected and washed over, along with various treasures. As he matured, Long rose to prominence as the sovereign of the seas and eventually ascended to the throne, becoming the supreme ruler over all dragons. In the realm of Chinese philosophy, Long was the embodiment of the celestial, masculine force of Yang. However, his connection with the earth and the feminine aspect of Yin was permanently severed. Over time, Long Wang's dwelling habits evolved. He soared through the skies in summer, ventured to the sea in fall, and retreated underground for winter slumber. Occasionally, Long Wang could be glimpsed floating amidst snow-white clouds, encircled by orange flames, or gliding over the azure ocean waves. As time passed, Long Wang's powers grew immensely, enabling him to command several deities. He won under his dominion Li Gong, the formidable Lord of Thunder, Feng Bo, the Sovereign of Wind, Dian Mu, the unmatched goddess and lord of lightning, and Yu Shi, the god of rain. Following the introduction of the theory connecting colors with the five elements around the early 4th century BC, Long Wang's realm expanded greatly. However, managing such a vast domain proved too cumbersome. To address this, Long Wang split into five distinct brothers. This division also influenced the Chinese calendar, which runs on a 60-year cycle. Consequently, there were now five unique dragons, each responsible for a different element. These dragons resided in grand palaces, each named for a cardinal direction. Zun Mu in the north, Ting Long in the east, Bai Hu in the west, Zhu Qiu in the south, and Tai Di in the center. Let's now explore the distinct identities of these five dragon brothers. Sing Long, King Long, also known as the azure or green dragon, gets its green hue from its association with spring in China, a season tied to the east where rain-bearing storm clouds arrive at winter's end. The dragon's color mirrors the lush green of new spring grass. King Long is a symbol of prosperity, and its sighting is seen as a fortunate sign. When Ting Long stirs in the clouds, it's believed that precious items like pearls, coral, gold, and silver descend from the sky. Ting Long is also referred to as Guang Dei, meaning increasing virtue. In Eastern traditions, the azure or green dragon is regarded as the most powerful yang entity. Originating from the East, its presence signifies happiness and abundance, making it an important symbol in Chinese culture. Ting Long represents foresight, wisdom, and steadfastness, qualities that make it a common depiction on banners. Guanzhong, the dragon Guanzhong, meaning increasing favor, was the guardian of the West, known as the land of the dead, a notable point considering the deserts in Western China. Guanzhong was depicted as a white dragon, though it's often believed that the West was also under the protection of Bai Hu, the white tiger, another revered creature in Chinese mythology. Regardless of who the guardian was, their presence was seen as a deterrent to malevolent forces and simultaneously viewed as a symbol of advancement 
in the realm of peaceful sciences. Guanzhong and Ting Long, another dragon, were frequently seen together. These two dragons were known for their joint role in guarding doorways, offering protection against evil influences. Zhu Kui, the Southern Sea's guardian, Zhu Kui meaning red bird, was traditionally depicted as a red dragon. However, much like the case with the white tiger, this southern guardian was often represented not by a dragon, but by a fenguang, the phoenix, another sacred animal in Chinese culture. The south was emblematic of the empress, symbolizing yin, and was considered the most prestigious direction. In fact, Chinese armies would proudly place banners bearing this symbol at the forefront. This reverence for the south was so pronounced that old Chinese maps, often confusing to European explorers, placed the south at the top instead of the customary north. Tun Wu, the dragon of the north, known as Sun Wu, translates to dark belligerence. This part of the world is not only symbolized by the dragon, but also by a tortoise entwined with a snake, representing the unity of heaven and earth. The colored Xuan is a deep black with hints of red, reminiscent of the night sky, and the tortoise, armored in its shell, embodies Wu or militancy. Traditionally, a black banner representing Sun Wu trailed behind the troops. The symbol Xuan has been a sacred part of the emperor's name for about a millennium, held in such reverence that only the emperor himself could bear the name Xuan. Consequently, the dragon, or tortoise, underwent a name change and became known as Zhen Wu, meaning true martiality. In elemental teachings, the north is linked with water, and thus Xuan Wu is the overseer and ruler of this element. In medieval depictions, Sun Wu is presented as appearing before Emperor Xu Chong. He is portrayed with a noble, handsome face, hair cascading over his shoulders, clad in a black robe with golden chainmail and a jade-decorated belt, a sword in hand but barefoot. A halo hovers over his head. Usually a squire is depicted behind him, holding a black flag, while Xun Wu himself stands atop a tortoise wrapped by a snake, both afloat on water. Han Long Hun Long, a dragon guardian of the center, symbolizes China itself in Chinese mythology. This central position makes Hun Long an emblem of the emperor. The yellow dragon's wisdom and virtue are beyond measure. Despite his conspicuous nature, Hun Long is elusive, preferring solitude. He emerges only with the winds and rain, ascending into the clear blue sky to roam the heavenly expanse. It is said that Hun Long will appear only when perfect harmony prevails. Without it, he remains unseen. It's important to note that the tale of the five longs is just one interpretation among many. According to Taoist beliefs, Long Wang manifested in only four forms, each presiding over one of the great seas that bordered China. These seas were, in essence, the limits of the known world for the ancient Chinese, and thus held significant importance. These four forms were considered to be the brothers of the Turtle Lo, with Guan being the eldest. In the 16th century fantasy epic Journey to the West by Wu Changin, among other works, these incarnations of Long Wang are given different names, Lo Guang, Lo Qin, Lo Shun, and Orong. Additionally, there was a belief that associated the Long Wangs with the four major rivers of China. This tale continues to unfold, as the lore of dragons, known as Longs, expanded over time. Ancient scriptures mention an array of over a hundred different types of these dragon Longs. Next, we will explore some of the most celebrated among them. Tianlong sky dragons, known as guardians of both the gods and the emperor, reside atop mountains, keeping away from battles. Typically yellow, they are distinguished by their expansive golden manes. Tianlong, a symbol of authority and strength, is revered for its connection to prosperity. It was believed that garments adorned with the image of Tianlong, the heavenly dragon, could bring good fortune. In ancient times, only the emperor was permitted to wear a tire featuring nine five-fingered dragons of Tianlong. This imagery was also exclusive to items belonging to the emperor, and breaching this rule was a crime punishable by death. Futslong The wealth and underworld dragons, called Futslongs, are guardians of precious minerals and metals. They accumulate these valuable resources underground. Each Futslong owns a large pearl, known for its power to enhance everything it contacts. This pearl represents not only material wealth, but also symbolizes a more profound, concealed treasure, wisdom. However, if one of these dragons is angered or its treasures are overly exploited, it has the mighty ability to activate volcanoes or induce earthquakes. Ying Long, the heavenly lord, possessed a magical, two-winged dragon named Ying Long, who resided in the northeastern part of the vast wilderness, on the southern slope of Xiangli Hill. 
Yanglong had the unique ability to store water and release it as rain. In times of need, the Heavenly Lord would call upon Yanglong's assistance. For instance, during a great flood, Yanglong was commanded to transfer the limitless waters from the earth to the ocean. Eagerly undertaking this task, Yanglong's movement created rivers and canals in the path traced by his tail, all flowing towards the eastern ocean, routes that exist to this day according to ancient lore. Ying Long once played a crucial role in a significant battle. Tasked with inundating the enemy with heavy rain, the dragon sword scoured to position rain clouds on a stand. However, due to a mishap, he tilted the stand, causing a massive downpour on his own forces instead. Although the Heavenly Lord was frustrated, they ultimately triumphed, in part thanks to Ying Long. The dragon, with a mighty Goga cry, descended from the heavens, overwhelming those who couldn't flee. Despite their victory, the Heavenly Lord was displeased with Ying Long's clumsiness. Weakened and unable to fly, Ying Long was abandoned on the battlefield, leading to frequent rainfall in the south of China ever since. With Ying Long's absence in the Heavenly Palace, rain control became erratic, complicating life for the people below. To combat drought, the people devised a solution. They would gather, dress as Ying Long, and perform a ritual dragon dance which was believed to be effective in invoking rain. Shan Long, the divine dragons, known as Shan Long, resided in the skies, their bodies shimmering in shades of capricious blue. These dragons wielded control over the wind, clouds, and rain, vital elements for life on Earth. Unlike other dragons, they had no wings and resembled massive serpents adorned with red and blue stripes. While generally benevolent, the sacred dragon would unleash its wrath on those who dared to disturb it. Its anger could manifest in devastating floods, fierce typhoons, or severe droughts. A common saying, the earth unites with the dragon, was often used to describe rain. In the 6th century, the artist Zan Kinyu painted a mural depicting four dragons. Spectators criticized the dragon's lack of eyes. In response, an irritated Zan picked up his brush again and completed the eyes on two of the dragons. Suddenly, thunder and lightning filled the air, the wall cracked, and the two completed dragons soared into the sky leaving the other two still eyeless behind. One well-known dragon among these is named Ryu. Ryu is a versatile dragon, capable of existing in the air, water, and on land. It symbolizes both rain and storms. Zhao Long Zhao Long is a scaly aquatic creature, notable as one of the few malevolent dragons in Chinese folklore with a penchant for consuming humans. Apart from its taste for human flesh, it also has a fondness for fried swallows, but shows a fear of iron and multicolored threads. Hence, when crossing waters where Zhou Long might dwell, it's advisable to carry a metal plate and several balls of colored thread in your pocket. However, one should refrain from consuming swallows in these areas, as this could increase the likelihood of a Zhou Long attack. To avoid mistaking the malevolent Zhou Long for another creature, one should recall its distinct description from the ancient text, List of Trees and Herbs. Zhou Long, a type of dragon, spans more than approximately 3.2 meters. It resembles a snake but possesses four legs. Notable features include a small head, a slender neck, a white band around its throat, a red-hued front chest, dark spots along its back, patterned flanks, orange on its head, and teeth protruding from behind its lips. Furthermore, the eggs laid by Zhao Long are notably large. Zhu Long In ancient Chinese mythology, Zhu Long is revered as a divine being who dispels darkness. As described in the Book of Mountains and Seas, Zhou Long possesses a serpent-like red body that stretches a thousand li, and a human face. The presence of light and darkness is contingent on Zhu Long's actions. Darkness envelops the world when he closes his eyes, and light emerges when he opens them. Remarkably, Zhu Long neither eats, sleeps, nor rests. The changing of seasons is attributed to his actions. When Zhu Long inhales, winter arrives, and when he exhales, summer follows. Zhu Long is known to illuminate the Nine Glooms. Another narrative suggests that in the northwest, where the sky is absent, a dragon resides, holding a fire in its mouth to light up the heavenly gates. This dragon is believed to be Zhu Long, serving as a luminous god in the celestial realm. Our tale continues with the story of the Nine Dragon Sons, a prevalent theme in Chinese zoomorphic symbolism. These mythical beings have become a fundamental part of ancient China's visual identity, featuring prominently in both architecture and the arts. The composition and even the count of these dragon sons vary. Some scholars argue that the number nine is more symbolic than literal, representing a triple triad, a yang benevolent number, and being the highest single-digit number, 
thus symbolizing abundance or many. The origins of this motif are shrouded in mystery. Each dragon sun emerged and evolved independently. The oldest of these dates back over 5,000 years, while the youngest is about a millennium old. In 2012, the Shanghai Mint commemorated these mythical figures by releasing a collection of 10 coins in silver and copper. Nine coins of the series feature each of the nine dragon sons, while the tenth coin showcases the dragon father. The sons depicted are Kunio, Yuzi, Bixi, Bayan, Poldo, Shufeng, Chaiwen, Suwining, and Fuxi. This collection acknowledges the composition as defined by Lai Donggang, solidifying it at a national level. Kunio Kunio, a diminutive dragon adorned with yellow scales and horns, has a fondness for music. This is why its likeness is intricately carved onto the headstocks of various traditional Chinese and ethnic musical instruments, historically adorning musical instruments with animal heads, particularly those of bulls, was a practice common among nomadic tribes. This tradition found its way to China during the Tang Dynasty with the introduction of the two-stringed Hukin. In the Yuan Dynasty, under Mongol rule, the original buffalo head was replaced with a horse's head. Later, during the Ming period, it evolved into a dragon's head, retaining only the horns from the original design. The term Qunyu still reflects this heritage, with hieroglyph Niu, symbolizing bull as a nod to its origins. Yezi Yezi, a mythical creature with a dragon's head and a jackal's body, is known for its fiery temperament, passion for combat, and attraction to the sense of blood and flesh. Consequently, its image is often carved onto sword hilts and blades. It's depicted as a dragon's head with an open mouth, positioned at the junction of the blade and the hilt, and is also a common motif on knife handles. Yezi symbolizes vigilance, watchfulness, and a readiness to swiftly punish those who stray from virtuous paths. Its representations are particularly prevalent on the weapons of honor guards and palace chamber protectors. Chofeng Chofeng, resembling a small dragon with canine features, is often found perched on the ridge of roofs vigilantly scanning for any potential dangers to the house. The presence and number of Chofeng figures can vary depending on the building's architecture and the status of its inhabitants. In some cases, a solitary Chofeng stands guard, while in others, it leads a group of special animals, all symbolically safeguarding the rooftops. It is believed that Chofeng possesses the ability to alert homeowners to looming threats and even avert misfortune. Pulo Pulo, a creature akin to a dragon yet notably smaller is believed to have lived near the sea and harbored an intense fear of whales. The mere sight of a whale would trigger Pulo into a loud, unceasing scream, only stopping once the whale was no longer visible. This characteristic of Pulo is symbolically represented in its depiction atop bell clappers, intended to sound an alert at the approach of an enemy while also instilling fear in them. Correspondingly, the bell's clapper is often designed in the shape of a whale to amplify the bell's sound making it more resonant and intimidating, as if mimicking Pulo's fearful cries. Suwani Suwani, a creature with a striking resemblance to a lion, is often depicted on incense burners, within Buddhist temples and near Buddhist statues. It has a preference for being in a tranquil, meditative state, typically sitting with its legs folded beneath it while savoring the aroma of burning incense. However, some accounts suggest that Suwani, much like a tiger, can become quite fearsome when angered, capable of overpowering and consuming tigers and leopards. Bixi Bixi, a dragon with a resemblance to a turtle, is known for its remarkable strength, often depicted bearing heavy loads on its back. Unlike a typical turtle, Bixi's distinguishing feature is its mouth filled with sharp teeth. There's a belief that Bixi, not the turtle, was the creature that aided the great mythical ruler Yu in quelling the floods and reconstructing the world. It was on Bixi's back that stone stales were traditionally placed, with the belief that a steel mounted on Bixi would endure forever, safeguarded from any external threats by its toothy guardian. During the dismantling of Beijing's old city walls, fragments of Bixi's statues were found near the Dongbianmen and Taxabianmen gates, leading to the belief that Beijing is situated upon Bixi's shell. Like the tortoise, Bixi is also associated with extraordinary longevity. Consequently, jade statues of Bixi were customary gifts for the elderly, particularly on their six death birthdays, symbolizing long life and endurance. Bayan, Bayan, resembling a tiger, is known for its intrinsic sense of justice, which draws it to observe court proceedings. Much like Judge Goyo's mythical sheep, Bayan possesses the ability to discern truth from falsehood, thereby identifying the guilty and the innocent. Due to this attribute, Bean's likeness is commonly found adorning the gates of prisons. Fuxi, Fushi, 
inheriting the handsome features of his father, has a deep affection for the fine arts, literature and various educational pursuits. This affinity often leads to his depiction atop commemorative steles. A classic example from the Tang Dynasty features a stone steel mounted on a bishi shell, crowned with a pair of fushi. These fushi are depicted with their bodies entwined in a serpentine manner. Chiwen, Chiwen, a creature that is part fish and part dragon, is a common adornment on the ridges of Chinese rooftops, typically positioned at both ends. Regarded as a sea creature, Chiwen is believed to possess the power to summon rain and spout water, making it an ideal figure for roof placement, serving as a guardian against fire. However, in the absence of fire, Chiwen is thought to grow restless and may contemplate abandoning its post. To prevent this, a sword with a fan-shaped hilt, said to have once belonged to the renowned Toist master Xung Shan from the Jin period, is used to anchor Chuan to the roof. This sword, believed to be a potent tool against evil forces, is considered more effective when embedded within Chuan's body, thereby intensifying its protective power and further confounding malevolent spirits. In some architectural designs, particularly in tiered structures, Chuan can be observed where the lower ridge meets the wall. In southern China and Japan, Chuan is almost indistinguishable from a fish, betrayed only by its sharp teeth along the ridge. This variant is known as the fish-tailed way. Yet, the story doesn't end here. In various local legends concerning the nine dragon sons, additional dragons and mystical creatures are mentioned, further extending the roster of these legendary beings. Tao Ti The Tao Ti is known in mythology as a creature defined by its insatiable appetite, with only a head that sports massive eyes, and an overly large mouth. There's a tale about the Tao Ti tells of its demise due to overindulgence in food, but for beings of magic, death is not a permanent state. Tao Ti symbolizes both greed and unbridled desire, a motif that first appeared on ancient Shan bronze vessels. These depictions served dual purposes, either as protectors or as cautionary reminders against the dangers of excess. Bakshia Bakshia is often mistaken for Bixi, yet, Despite its turtle-like appearance, Bakshia has distinct preferences. Unlike Bixi, Bakshia is not inclined to bear heavy burdens on its back, but instead revels in water, particularly in spouting it. Bakshia is a common sight on bridges and structures near water bodies. Moreover, Bakshia's head is typically featured at the end of gutters. In the Gugong of Beijing alone, there are as many as 1,142 statues of Bakshia. Each city's Bakshia has unique characteristics. For instance, the Baxia of Beijing is known for its twisted nose, while Xi'an's version is distinguished by a broad smile. Jia Tu Jia Tu was a reclusive creature that resided within a clamshell, which it would swiftly close at the sight of anyone approaching. This characteristic behavior is why Jia Tu head, often depicted with a ring in its teeth, is sometimes used in place of doorknobs on doors and gates. The primary role of Jia Tu in symbolism was to act as a guardian against evil and other malevolent forces. Yet, there's more to our tale. In some accounts, these additional beings are also considered part of the dragon's progeny. Ouyu Ouyu, a legendary fish, is recognized for bearing the figures of Buddha and Guanyin on its head. As described by Lu Rong, Ouyu resembles a dragon and has a penchant for swallowing fire, hence its placement on roof ridges. Black Shu. Pike Shu, a mystical being, combines a dragon's head, a horse's body, and the hooves of a tylen, bearing a resemblance to a lion in colored gray-white. This creature has the ability to fly and sustains itself on gems, money, and treasures. These items, rather than being digested, accumulate in its magical belly, making Pike Shu a symbol of wealth accumulation. While not traditionally listed among the dragon's sons in classic texts, some folk tales place Pike Shu as either the third or ninth son of Long Wang a fact that may have led to its inclusion in this list. Hu Hu, a hybrid of dragon and dog, is known for its statues erected on tall stone pillars in Tiananmen Square. Its role was to serve as a reminder to the emperor to venture beyond the palace walls and stay informed about the nation's state, gaining popularity during the Ming King period. Friends, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. The story about Chinese dragons has come to an end.